Hi guys and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional video. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through today's example problem. Today we'll be working on example problem 5.2, determining the number of atoms present in a sample. Uh, the question reads, how many atoms of copper are in a 1980 penny that has a mass of 3.105 grams? All right, this is a two-step conversion, converting grams to moles to atoms is a two-step conversion, so unfortunately a lot of students can get a little uh, flustered by this, a little bit, um, shall I say, um, maybe confused, because it's a two-step conversion instead of a one. So I like to draw a little cartoon, a little uh, helpful reminder on how to do this kind of conversion, and I call this the molehill. Now, the molehill is essentially this little street a little hill on it and it's on top of the hill is the unit mole to the left of the hill is the unit gram and to the right of the hill is the unit atom okay that's just how we start the mole hill now on this road we have toll booth much like we do here in Florida if you want to use the road you have to pay the toll this toll on the left of the mole hill is the grams over mole toll, or in other words, it's molar mass or atomic mass, depending on how you're working. And on the right-hand side of the mole, this is the Avogadro's number toll, or the one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23 conversion. These are just simply conversion factors. Now, let's say we're standing right here. I'll draw myself with a top hat because I think top hats are pretty cool. There we go. A little red band on my top hat because it's, you know, just kind of neat. Now let's imagine then we want to walk or drive or however, get ourselves up this part of the hill to be standing here at the top of the mole hill. And here I'll show with my hat in my hand. My little red stripe. Now, to do that, we would simply use this conversion factor. Now, let's imagine we want it to keep going, and instead of stopping at moles, we go through the Avogadro's number tax, or toll, and then we end up over here at atoms, which is where we want to be. So to do this, we'd have to start over here at grams, pay this toll, get up to here at moles, come back over here and pay this toll to be at atoms. Now, a lot of students, and I've seen it a lot, want to go from here, circumvent paying the tolls, try to not pay the tolls, you know, and just go directly from grams to mole. The trouble with that is that under this toll bridge, or sorry, under the mole hill, there is a man-eating dragon, a woman-eating too, named Fred. Fred has long flowing red hair. Fred breathes fire and roasts students who try to disobey his tolls. And he'll get you. He'll get you every time. If you try to go from here to here, grams to atoms, without going through the mole and without paying his two tolls, you will be in deep, deep trouble. So we start with grams, we go to moles, we go to atoms. That's how we do it. Okay? So let's go up here. I've written the question up here. Determine the number of atoms present in a sample. How many atoms of copper are in a 1980 penny that has a mass of 3.105 grams? So we want to go from grams to atoms. We want to go from grams to atoms. And we just learned from Fred, our friend Fred, that if we're going to do this, we have to do grams. Oops, let me just back up there. Grams multiplied by something that puts grams on the bottom and moles on the top. That gets us to the top of the mole hill. Top of the mole hill. Now, according to Fred, we have to pay an additional tax because if we stop here, we'll stop at the top of the mount of the hill. We don't want to stop at the top of the hill. We want to keep moving to the other side of the hill. So we have to pay another tax or another toll. 
So we put the mole down here, so the moles will cancel, and atoms come up here. Now, if we stop here, that will get us and leave us in the units atoms, and that's where we want to be. Now, like always, we have to make sure we put the right numbers in the right place. And it's not hard, it's not difficult, you just have to remember how to do it. This number here, 1980 is kind of irrelevant, doesn't really matter. It's just the year the penny was minted. What matters is the mass right here. So let's put that right here, 3.105 grams. Now, this is molar mass. So that means we have to go to the periodic table. We're looking for the molar mass of copper, which is Cu. Let's see if I have a periodic table. Here we go. There's copper, number 29. It's in group 11, period 4. Number 29, that's copper. Its mass is 63.55. 63.55. So let's go back here. equals one mole. Okay, so this is the atomic mass of copper. We also need to know that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Now remember Avogadro's number or the mole can be uh, one mole of anything. It doesn't have to be atoms, but in this, in this particular question we're going to use the unit atoms. All right, now let's start plugging in numbers. Um, let's start here. Let's start putting numbers into here. We have this one right here. That's what we need. It has grams and it has moles. So now the number one goes with the unit mole. The number one goes with the unit mole. So the number one comes up here. The grams, right here, I just circled it, has the number 63.55. So let's put that right there. Remember, remember, very, very important, the numbers are married to the unit. The numbers always go with the unit. They never leave it. So don't mix those up. If you mix those up, the whole question's wrong. Okay? It's very important. Now, let's work on this particular uh, conversion factor, atoms and moles. Well, here we have mole, here we have atom. So this conversion factor, one mole, puts the number one down here. And this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, Avogadro's number, is with the unit atom. So that would go up here. 6.022 times 10 to the 23 goes right there. Let me uh, clean that up a little bit. I don't like how it looks. I'll rewrite this whole part right here in one second. I just didn't like how it looked. I want, to make, I want it to be as clear as it can be for you guys. 6.022 times 10 to the 23, and the number 1 down here. The atom, atom, Avogadro's number. Mole, number 1, number 1. Okay? Now, grab your calculator. I need a scientific calculator to do this one. It's going to be 3.1, sorry, 3.105 divided by 63.55 multiplied by 6.022 exponent 23 equals. Now the calculator, the calculator gives me this answer. 2.9415. Two two nine nine times ten to the twenty two, which we know isn't completely right because we haven't rounded it yet. So let's take a look. Here we have four sig figs. Here we have four sig figs, and here we have four sig figs, and this number has more than four. Let's not even worry about how many it has. It has more than four. So there's my fourth significant digit. Then the following number is a 2. So my final rounded complete answer will be 2.942 times 10 to the 22 atoms. 
Now, we paid the dragon his toll. He shouldn't be bothering us anymore because we paid all the money he needs and we got the final answer, 2.942 times 10 to the 22 atoms. And if you want to, you can just put copper right there to remind yourself this is for copper. All right, now, uh, these questions are a little tough, so make sure you practice them. They're important for the laboratory uh, course as well as for the lecture portion of the uh, 1032 sequence. So make sure you can do this. It's very, very important, and it's also very easy once you get the hang of it. Now with that, I'd like to wish you good luck and good chemistry.